Hello, uh, so just a quick disclaimer, if you actually go to your content browser and uh, you go to your interface, there's this widget blueprint. Uh, we're actually going to be creating a widget in our first code. But the problem is, uh, if you create one of these, you can't really do anything with them as far as I can tell. Um, as of, uh, we have to manually create one and then sort of specify whatever we want there. It's kind of annoying, but... Hey everyone, so today we're going to be showing you how you can create a button in your UI which you can interact with. We're going to be using the Verse programming language, so I hope you enjoy. First thing we need is an actual Verse uh, device. And to that, uh, go up here uh, where it says Verse and open your Verse Explorer. Alright, I'll go here and we're going to add a new Verse file to project. Here I'm going to name this uh, custom underscore UI. And let's create that. <clears throat> okay. Now, once you open this, you're going to open this in Visual Studio Code. All right. So, to actually get this verse device, um, I'm going to go here. Uh, Go back to my UEFN folder. I'm going to just close this and then click verse and then build verse code. Once you do that, you can go into your content browser and creative devices and you have your verse UI uh, class here. So you can drag that out and it's this PC uh, looking thing. Okay, so to actually fire off our uh, UI, I'm going to be using a trigger for this and you can use whatever, but I'm just going to be using a button. So go into your Fortnite folder and you can just search up button and i'm going to use uh, this all right so this is what's gonna uh, uh prompt our actual ui so let me just do that okay we have our button and we're going to configure this button to be able to actually pop uh, pop out the ui all right so back in our uh visual studio code We actually need a reference to our button. To do that, you want to create uh, a button uh, variable here. So I'm going to create a, this is called a button UI equals, it's going to be of type button underscore device. And I'm going to set this to a button underscore device. Now, how we actually link this, we need uh, this at editable in here. So whatever is below this, if we, uh, let me actually show you guys. So if you go back to your UEFN, go to verse, build verse code. If you go to your terminal here, you have this details panel and you can see our button UI is here. So anything you put editable, uh, you're going to actually see it here. And that's useful because if we go here, you see, we can specify our button. In this case, uh, is this button that I've created here, or you can, uh, pick this, uh, eyedropper thing. And click on this and it's going to select our button for us in our visual studio code we now have a reference to our button so we can actually use our button in this on begin uh, i'm going to just uh, delete this uh, basically we want a uh, ref we want to know whatever the button is pressed so to do that we do button ui dot interacted with event dot subscribe and you're going to pass in a function here, or you're going to pass in what's called a callback. Now, a callback is just a function that executes uh, whenever this uh, button UI is uh, triggered. You're basically storing a function, and whenever that function is ready to be called, it'll be called. Uh, that's why it's called a callback. And in my case, I'm just going to create a function, a handle button uh, pressed. Now you're going to see we have this the squiggly line because we have not actually made the button handle button press function. So to do that, we're going to do handle button press. This is a function. Uh, so we need to do this. Now the handle button press function uh, needs to take a agent uh, parameter. So we can do agent and we specify the type is going is going to be of type agent. Okay, and it's going to be a void returning function. So equals and do that. Okay, so basically this button UI, uh, this subscribe function, uh, it needs a specific function here. 
and that specific function needs to take an argument of type agent. And this agent type um, can, can be a player, but it can also be an AI. So technically an AI can interact with a button. So you need to specify of type agent. This you can call whatever, this is just a variable name. So let's say for example, dude or whatever, but it needs to be of type agent. It, uh, for example, if I put print high, you're gonna see we have no errors, but if I put this of type, I don't know, um, float, you're gonna see we get an error here. It says expects a value of type agent, but this is of type float. So make sure whatever function you're creating, it has a type of agent, in this case, agents. I'm just gonna stick with dude, uh, cause, uh, cool. Now, uh, we need to actually cast our agent into a player. So what we do if, we're gonna call this uh, player equals, and then player of dude, okay? So what this is saying is, uh, we're gonna assign a variable called player uh, to this agent type, uh, dude is a type agent. It says here, but we're going to cast this, uh, just to see if maybe this is a player and we have to do this in, in an if expression, because, uh, for example, if you take this out, you're going to see, you're getting, you're going to get an error. It says, um, this has the size effect, which is not allowed. So we have to enclose it in an if statement. Okay. So we're saying here, if. Uh, this dude is of type player, then we can assign this to this player variable. Okay, so now we need a actual reference to our player UI. And for that, we actually have to go up here and put the using. And I believe it is unrealengine.com slash temporary slash UI. Okay, sorry. It's slash unrealengine.com slash temporary slash UI. This is going to give us uh, access to a bunch of uh, UI uh, functions and stuff in your if same if statement you want to do uh, player UI equals or uh, colon equals get player UI. You put in brackets and you pass in your player variable. So this player thing. So whatever is here, uh, you would pass it in here. So this basically gets a reference to the player UI. Okay, so now in here we have access to the player UI. We can now add widgets to the player UI. So what you would do is do player UI dot add widget. And then you would pass in a UI widget. So let's say new UI. All right, but as you can see, uh, we don't have an actual variable called new UI. So we're gonna make a function uh, to create a new UI. So I'm just going to comment this out, but we're going to return here in a second. Okay. So here, let me actually, yeah, let's do it up here. I'm going to call a, let's see, create UI, uh, function. Okay. So it's going to take uh, no arguments so that, and I'm going to make it return a canvas. Okay. And a canvas is basically a space where you can put a bunch of widgets in it. Uh, the canvas is actually a widget in and, in it of itself, <laughs> but you can put a bunch more stuff in your canvas. Think of your canvas as sort of like a blank paper and you can put a bunch of stuff on your canvas. Okay. Okay. So to create a new canvas, we would do new canvas. It's going to be, it's of type canvas equals canvas. And then uh, we're going to have to construct our canvas. So put a colon here. And then down here, we're actually going to specify what goes inside our canvas. Now, the first thing I, uh, you need is actually what's called slots. So we do slots. And then this is going to be an array. Now I can say, like I said, you can specify a bunch of stuff in here. And every sort of element within the canvas is going to be a canvas slot. So let me create my new slot. So canvas underscore slot and then colon again. Okay. All right now within this canvas slot, we specify whatever goes inside this canvas slot. And I'm actually going to copy paste uh, some code. Uh, okay. So I've copy pasted some code here. This basically sets up a widget. I'm going to go over it real quick. Uh, but before that, you can see we have some vector two variables here. And uh, to actually uh, get rid of those, we need to actually do using again, slash unreal engine.com slash temporary slash spatial math. And you can see now that goes away.
Okay, so now actually I need to create our button for our actual widget. So firstly, go up here and using slash fortnite.com slash UI. Okay. Uh, actually, first I'm going to create some text. So I'm going to create text for button. We have to add, add this localizes thing. Then we have type message. And it's going to be equal to hello. Now, if we go here to our create UI, I'm going to create a button. So I'm going to call this button for canvas of type button underscore quiet equals button underscore quiet and i can specify the default text x equals and then our text for button okay so i've created a button with default text and we can uh, just assign the widget to our button for canvas so we're done with our canvas and the last thing we need to do is actually we'll get a canvas from this create ui so i'm gonna say new ui of type canvas equals create ui right so we can now create a ui from that and now we can go to player ui dot add a widget and we're gonna add our new ui all right and that's gonna add our new ui in our handle button press which, as you recall, is going to be fired anytime we press the button. And we go back here. We can actually go to verse, build verse code, and let's launch our Fortnite session. Okay, so I'm in my Fortnite session. I've started the game. And if I go back to the button here, you see we get our button there. Hey guys, so real quick, um, I've used the button underscore quiet, which is why we get the gray button option. Here on screen, we have the three button types. You can just change it to button loud or button underscore regular. Now, as you can see, uh, I can't really, if I do this or do tab, I can't really interact with this. That's because you just need to change one piece of code, which should be easy. Okay, so I'm back here and here in our player done add widget, we need to go here and add in an extra argument. Layer underscore UI underscore slot input mode equals UI underscore input underscore mode dot off. Okay, so back in my Fortnite session, I'm going to start my game. And if you go here, and if we interact with this, you see now we get the cursor. And uh, I can't move anymore because we have this. And now we can press this. So at the moment, uh, this doesn't do anything. So I'm sort of stuck here uh, because we haven't actually done anything. So I'm going to show you guys how we can actually use this button to create an event. And the event we want is to actually exit out of this uh, UI thing. So, okay, so we're back here. Um, so like we said, we're going to make that button actually exit us out of the actual widget. Okay, so to start, we're going to actually do our button UI click. So we're going to go to where we created our button and we're going to do button dot on click dot subscribe. And we're going to pass in another callback here. I'm just going to call this handle UI button button click. It'll be called button for canvas. Sorry, because that's our actual button here. So you can notice we get an error because we need to actually create this handle UI button click. Okay, so go here and I'm going to create our handle handle UI button click. And remember how we have to specify a specific argument here where, well, this one is going to return a message. So we're going to call this message. It's going to be of type widget underscore message of type void. And that's going to be that, right? Okay. So the first thing we need a, uh, another reference to our player. Uh, so another variable, so we can do player equals, and we can actually get that by doing our message dot player. That's going to give us the player uh, who fired off or who clicked on the button. And from then we can do if player UI equals get player UI and we pass in our player. Okay. So if we can successfully get our player UI, then I'm going to remove our UI. So we would do player UI dot remove widget. We can pass in our widget, which in this case would be our canvas so player <laughs> canvas. Now, unfortunately, well, player canvas doesn't exist. Uh, so we actually need to get a reference to our player canvas uh, whenever we return this create UI. So let me just comment this out for a second. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it is uh, I'm going to create a variable up here. I'm going to call this variable 
see player canvas. I'm going to assume you only create one canvas here. It's going to be a type canvas and just a canvas constructor. Okay. And now down here, when we actually create our canvas, so when we do the create UI, we're going to be assigning the new UI. It's of type canvas. So we can actually just go here, do set player canvas equals new UI. In fact, you can actually get rid of this new UI entirely and instead call this. So instead of a new UI, we're now going to do create UI. So we're going to assign our player canvas that's up here to our new UI. And instead of a new UI, pass in player canvas. Now we can go back here and player UI dot remove widget player canvas. So that's going to remove our widget. Okay, so back into my Fortnite session, I have a push changes. And if I go here, you can see we can interact with this. And if we go here and click, you're going to see that disappears. Our canvas gets removed. And now we are free again. And if you go here, a new canvas gets created. We can click that and we're free again. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, I apologize for the length of the video. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, I yeah, hope this was helpful.